Okay, see, we're already back off the slides, and now we're going to do something really cool. Actually, we're going to do two really cool things, but the first of which is we're going to do a local wipe. I'm going to show you how you wipe a device, and where Global Mantix uses this process most often is when one user that had a corporate-issued iPad uses it, and then they decide to leave the company or you know, transition to a different job where they don't need it. They turn the iPad back into IT and then IT wipes the device locally so that it can be redeployed to a new user. Why buy a new iPad when you can make an existing one as good as new? So to do that local wipe, we tap settings and we go to our general settings. And of course, we're already there because the last time we were in the settings app, this is the screen we were at. So we're on the right under the general settings. I'm going to scroll upwards with my finger until I get down to the bottom where it says reset. And I'm going to tap reset. And when I do that, I'll get a number of options, one of which is erase all content and settings. It's the second one from the top. And when I do that, it's going to ask me for my passcode because we've set a passcode and before it's going to allow me to make such a significant change, I have to enter it in and I'm going to do that. And now it's going to remind me, hey, this is going to erase everything. So I'll tap erase. It's going to tell me one more time, this can't be undone. If you click erase one more time, everything's gone on this iPad. It's lost forever. So I'm going to go ahead and tap erase. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to it. That's a local wipe. The device screen turns black. It does its magic and erases those AES 256-bit encryption keys. And the device is back to the way it was when it came out of the box. It's brand new, waiting to be set up. So it will have to be set up before it can be used by a new user or even the existing user. This is a great security feature. Okay, that was cool. But this is going to be even cooler because now we're going to do a remote wipe. And before I do the remote wipe, let me just tell you that iOS supports multiple remote wipe options. So there's multiple ways that you as the admin or Janie from accounting as the user can issue the remote wipe command. For instance, if the iPad is connected to an exchange back end, the Exchange administrator can issue a remote wipe command using exchange tools or the user if the exchange backend is 2007 or higher the user can issue their own remote wipe command right from within Outlook Web Access and I'm going to teach you how to do those or show you how to do those later on in the future exchange lesson but right now in this lesson I want to show you a different way to do it utilizing Apple's iCloud service and specifically their find my iPhone app if you will and before we do that let me mention that iCloud has to be enabled on the device for this process to work so to see if the device has iCloud enabled you would just go into the settings app and go down to the iCloud category on the left and now under the iCloud settings you'll notice that, that my Apple ID is there where it says account and down almost towards the bottom you'll see find my iPad that slider is on that has to be on for what I'm going to show you to work. Now, obviously you can't check whether it's on or not when you need to do a remote wipe. It's a little too late then. So this is something you wanna make sure is set up on your iPads before you get going. Now, if you don't use iCloud, then you would not rely on this process to wipe your devices. But at Global Mantix, they've decided that iCloud is fine for their iPad users to use for different items. Like they don't use it for email, as you see, mail is off, but they do allow it to be used for other things such as Safari bookmarks, user photo streams, and the Find My iPad app, of course. So besides checking that, the device has to have location services enabled. And you find location services under privacy, and right at the top, you'll see location services is on. They have to be on for this to work. If it's off, it won't work. And if I tap location services real quick, you'll see that find my iPad is 
on, meaning it has permission to use location services. So since both those things are enabled, we're good to issue a remote wipe command with Find My iPad through iCloud just using a web browser on any computer. So I'm going to go ahead and tap my privacy button to get out of here and then press my home button to go back to the iPad home screen. Now, what I want you to do is keep an eye on the, the screen there. Okay, as you're watching me on the screen, what I've done here is widened out my record area and I'm going to take advantage of Windows 7 snap feature. And I'm going to move over my air server window here and then I'm going to pull up my Internet Explorer browser and I'm going to snap it to the left side so that you can see both because at this point what I'm going to do is log into www.icloud.com right that's what's typed in up here in the address bar but I'll go ahead and do it again just to refresh the screen now I need to type in my Apple ID This is the Apple ID that is associated to the device that I want to wipe with iCloud. And I have to type in the password for that Apple ID. Okay, so now I'm signed into iCloud. You can see there's my account. That's me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Find My iPhone button. It'll come up here and it will go to the last location of the last device selected. So I'm going to tap the device button or click the device button with my mouse and select John's iPad, which you'll see. There it is. There I am. And now what I want you to do is keep an eye on my AirPlay screen. And notice I'm going to move it with my finger so you can see it's live. I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you or fake you out. I'll even open up the settings app and back, back out. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click the Erase This iPad button. And again, it's going to warn me, this isn't reversible. Are you sure you want to do this? It's going to make me type my Apple ID password to be able to do that again. And I'll click Erase. And you notice how fast after I click Erase, my device wiped? That's it. I mean... The, the AirPlay screen stopped because my device went black. It started a factory reset. It's basically wiped, and there's nothing I can do now. The device screen is black, and it's starting back up and comes back to that out-of-box experience again where I have to completely set it up as if it was a new device. Pretty cool, huh? And you notice how fast it was? Now, if my device wasn't connected to a network, it wouldn't have taken effect immediately. But as soon as the device connected to a network again, it would have received the command, and that would have been that. So, pretty cool, huh? I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it tells me it was erased less than a minute ago. And the cool thing there is that if the device wasn't connected, when it did finally connect, you'd be able to log in here and see that, yes, this is when it connected, and this is when I erased it. So you get confirmation. It's a really great feature, and it's an easy way where you can walk a user through. For instance, at Global Mantix, this happened. The CEO said that he left his iPad on the beach in Punta Cana, Mexico, and was all concerned because it had you know, his email and everything on it. And the IT guy, who was driving home from work, you know, rather than turn around and waste any time, literally walk the CEO right through how to log into iCloud from a computer, you know, using his Apple ID and password, how to click Find My iPhone, click the device, hit Erase, and that was it. So he became the hero for the day and possibly the week, I don't know. But anyways, it was a great thing. I hope you think that's as cool as I think it is.